Well, hello, my name is Anthony Sicaro. I'm founder and president of Providence Financial and Insurance Services located right in the San Fernando Valley in Woodland Hills, California. I'm also a host of the Providence Financial Retirement Show, which airs every Saturday on AM870 KRL Lay the Answer. And this is my periodic market update. Uh, a couple times a month, I try to come to you and give you my thoughts as far as what's going on and try to help you make sense of it all. And I got to tell you, there's a lot going on right now. You know, the market's taking a little bit of a breather. Um, you know, the, the market was up about 14% since the election. And now we're down a couple of hundred points in the last uh, nine or 10 days, I believe. And... The question that everyone wants to know is, is where do we go from here? And yet the market at this point is still riding on Trump's promises, you know, through the election and campaign, you know, Trump promised tax cuts and a repeal of Obamacare and a better system and infrastructure rebuilding and so on. And, and so far, we haven't really seen any ink on app. As a matter of fact, it's, it's almost been a little bit of the opposite. You know, just last week, um, they tried to repeal Obamacare, and that did not happen. And that's a part of what has caused the 10-day pause at this point, is the is fact that they, they couldn't repeal it. And now I understand that that's pushed off until the fall. So then the next question becomes, what about tax cuts? You know, what if that doesn't go through? What kind of effect is that going to have on the market? Um, what if the economy doesn't grow at 4% like uh, Trump is pushing? Everyone around is saying that a 4% is just really a, an, an outrageous expectation. I don't really believe that it is. Uh, China is, you know, very... Very upset that they're growing at less than 7% this year, which is uh, their target. And yet we would love to grow at, you know, at 4%. We've been growing at around 2%. You know, and, and really the, the entire economic outlook and the entire economic picture at this point is based on the growth of the country. You know, we're still $20 trillion in debt. And as, you know, many of you know, just a week ago or so, Janet Yellen raised interest rates up by a quarter of a percent, uh, 25 basis points. And yet what you may not know or what you may not think of is that that 25 basis points is actually costing the government because of that raise in interest on the $20 trillion in debt, costing the government $50 billion a year of interest payments. And that's something that you don't hear a lot talked about out there. Now, at the same time, Trump is going to be unveiling here a $1 trillion infrastructure plan. $1 trillion. I mean, that's a lot of money, right? But we're $20, $20 trillion in debt, so what's an extra trillion? And the reality is, is you know, who's going to wind up paying for that? Now, ultimately, I understand that that plan is going to call for private companies, and that's going to be good for the economy, but the taxpayers are going to pay for it. He's got to spend the $1 trillion in order to get a, a return on the money and help the economy boost. And, and ultimately, it's going to be helpful for the economy. But as I've said in my previous market updates, as for those of you that have, have watched, uh, the reality is it's going to be one step back before you take two steps forward. And in the long run, I'm very positive about things, but in the short run, that one step back has potential to hurt. It's almost like starting a business. For those of you that have ever started a business out there, you know that it takes a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort up front, a lot of risk up front before you succeed. You gotta put out money and then uh, as you continue to grow your business and build your business, then eventually you'll succeed. And even that's not guaranteed. And that's kind of where we are now. I think it's that one step back, got to put out that trillion dollars and really hope that it works and then the country will succeed. But my fear is that that one trillion dollar starts a landslide. You know, right now the stock market's been going up since 2009. And, you know, really the way that that looks is it went up from 2009 to 2013. And then really from 2013 to 2016, it just plateaued. It just stayed there for a few years. Uh, there were certainly some bumps along the way, some rises, some drops. But for essentially for three years, it just didn't go anywhere. The bulk of the growth was from 2009 to 2013. And then in, in this last three months or so, we're up about 14%. So we've had a little bump. And some people feel bad about missing that. And, and I don't want you to be short-sighted. You know, the, 
The, being invested in the stock market is more of a marathon. It's not a sprint. And then there are going to be times you get your second win and you can run a little faster. And there's going to be times you need to run a little slower. But it's not a sprint. We're, we're not in this. You're not in this for the 14%. Un unless you're risking your money, unless you're a day trader or you're a scalper. Well, yeah, then the 14% is what you want. That's not my clientele. That's not you, I'm sure. Uh, the reality is, is you're in this for the long run. And, and what's happened over the last you know four or five years you know, not what's happened over the last three months. And so you don't want to be short sighted, but I still feel like there's a lot of people out there that are, are being a little short sighted and they're worried or they're concerned about the fact that they missed this last run up. Well, you know what they say, right? What goes up must come down. And I, I don't think that's any different with the stock market. And you know, if you've watched my videos or you know me that, you know, for a number of years now, I feel like there's going to be a market correction. And there's nothing out there that's indicating any different. There's nothing that's pointing to a different, you know, different direction. And yet the reality is, is, is we haven't had it. And I think we haven't had it because of the artificialness of the economy and the government and corporations. Corporations are doing a lot of stock buybacks. The governments have financed our way to a good economy. We've gotten into more debt in the last 10 years as a country than we had in the entire previous history of this country. And all of that eventually is gonna is gonna catch up to us. I think I think right now the economy is built on a house of cards, and and and, and as the house of cards gets bigger and bigger, when it collapses, I think it just means it's gonna be a bigger, bigger collapse. And and history proves that to be true. You know, history tells us that that's probably true as well. And you know, if you believe that history would tend to repeat itself like I do, and like you know almost everyone I talk to does, then it's probably a good idea to know what. You know, 200 years of stock market history has told us about where the economy and where the market might go from here. And I actually have a, a video about that. I, I think it's called Market History. Um, if you found this video, you can certainly find that video as well, too. You may want to make your way to our YouTube channel if you want to watch that video. The best way to get to our YouTube channel is to go right to our homepage of our website, ProvidenceFinancialInc.com and uh, click on the YouTube button that's in the upper right corner that takes you right to our channel, search for market history, and it's a video about what market history tells us about where the economy is going to go. But even without market history, when you see an economy grow really you know, fast, starts going up, and then goes up a little faster, and then go really, really fast, what's likely to happen next? It's likely to crash. And in, from 2009 to now, the market's gone up over 300%. Now you tell me, is that slow growth or is that very fast growth? It's a very, very fast growth. So from a logical standpoint, we can't sustain these levels. And so with Trump wanting to take his, his infrastructure plan and put it in place and spend $1 trillion, the reality is, is I'm worried that that could cause another collapse and could be the start of that avalanche that we kind of know is coming regardless of who's president regardless of what happens something's got to start it and uh, obamacare has already failed i don't think it's off the shelf permanently it'll be revisited but again what if his tax plan fails um what if something goes south with putin i know he he and putin are in discussions about meeting what if things go bad there you know what if uh korea uh north korea gets a a successful missile launch. I mean, there's so many things I think that could start that avalanche. And that right now is not the time to be passive. Right now is the time to be very careful. And I almost don't think that it matters what age you are. You know, the stock market and Wall Street wants you to believe that the younger you are, the more you can afford to risk, uh, the more you should be able to risk. I, I don't believe that. If you think the stock market's going to crash, why would you want to have any money in the stock market, regardless of whether you can afford the risk or not? You know, you don't have your money in the stock market because you like the idea of losing your shirt, right? You have the your money in the stock market because you like the potential for reward. And so we have to ask ourselves, is the potential for reward, is it there? You know, I could get in the ring with Evander Holyfield, but why would I do that? Now, if you were to get together and come up with a $10 million purse for me to go three rounds with him, I'd have to think about it. You know, if I survived, I'd have a big reward on the other end. I wouldn't just get in the ring with Evander for no potential reward. And I think that's where we are with the stock market. Why get into the stock market if there's no potential reward, but there's a whole lot of risk? So let's look at it another way. Um, let's say that you and I go to Las Vegas 
and we're sitting there looking at this game. And we want to know whether it makes sense for us to play this game or not. Whether you're a gambler or not, just play along with me. So we're looking at this game. And here's how it works. If you bet $100 and you win, you walk away with 120 bucks. But if you lose, you walk away with 50 bucks. 50 bucks. So you, you bet 100 bucks. If you win, you walk away with $120. If you lose, you walk away with $50. If that's how the game worked, would we ever sit down at that table? Now, I've asked this question hundreds of times, maybe more. And I've never had anyone say yes. Why? Because the reward of winning $20 is not worth the risk of potentially losing $50. The reward is not worth the risk. And so we would never sit down at that table. And yet I think that's where we are in the stock market. Maybe the market does go up another 10%, another 20%. I don't know where it's going to stop. But history has shown us that we could have a 50 or 60% crash from here. And if you watch my market history video, that will start to make a little more sense. But I think that's where we are. Maybe we do have the reward of a potential another 20%. But we certainly have the risk of a 50 to 60% downside. So if we wouldn't sit down at that table with $100, does it really make sense to sit down at that table, at the Wall Street casino table with the bulk of your portfolio or, or with any of your portfolio at this point? I think the answer from a risk-reward ratio is probably not. Probably not. So what do you do? Well, number one, I think you got to be cautious. I think you got to be very careful. Does that mean you have no money in the stock market? I mean, let's face it. If we knew 100% that the market was going to go down, you wouldn't want to have any money in the stock market at all. Is it possible we're wrong? Is it possible the market doesn't go down? Sure, it, anything's possible. But if you're betting your dollars, you want to bet on the slim possibility or you want to bet on the odds, you know, on the probability that the market's probably going to head that direction. So, you know, depending on your situation, uh, your age, a lot of factors, depending on that, maybe, maybe you do want to have something in the market, 10%, 20%. Again, that's all, it's all relative to your situation. There's no general rule of thumb. Wall Street, the general rule of thumb that Wall Street wants you to believe is the younger you are, the more you can afford to risk. No, I don't, I don't believe that. I think the general rule of thumb is, doesn't apply to you because you're not general. So if you're thinking about, or if you're thinking twice about Wall Street having your money in the market, what do you do? Well, let me tell you what I have for my clients and what we've done. We have our clients that are a little bit younger, treading water at this point, earning a decent rate of return, waiting for a better time to get in the market. We have them in different investments that are designed to pay interest and dividends. Our target for our clients is somewhere between 4 to 7%, depending on the investments and the risk that they want to have, but really without the risk of the stock market. And a lot of these investments will hold their own when the stock market crashes. And so... If we can earn a, a 4 or 5% return now, tread water a little bit until the stock market crashes and, and then get back into the stock market with a portion of our money, I think that's a very good strategy at this point. And that certainly could be a strategy that if you're, you know, if you're younger might make sense. So don't hear me. I'm not saying never the stock market. I'm just saying that right now the stock market probably doesn't make sense for the majority of people. On the other hand, if you're a little bit older, I think you have to ask yourself, do you even want money in the market at all? If you can live off of a 3 4 5% consistent rate of return off of your portfolio, then why would you even want to gamble? And, and I guess that's a question that you'd have to ask yourself. And so, you know, I, we have a lot of clients that have no intention of ever getting back in the market because they can live off of the 5% that we're helping them earn a year from their portfolio. But ultimately, I think you need to be super cautious. If you're younger, maybe tread water with some of these investments. If you're a little bit older, maybe tread water. Or maybe get out of the beach. Maybe get out of the out out of the the ocean. Period. Um, why take the risk if you don't need to? So, um, if you have any questions about any of this, please don't hesitate to call my office. The number here is eight one eight 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 seven six four four three. Um, I hope this information has helped. I hope it's given you some insight as far as my thoughts are concerned. And if you're a client of mine, I want to thank you. Uh, thank you for your trust. Thank you for your business. I don't take it lightly. Uh, if you're not a client of mine and you just want to know more about what we do, you can find out uh, more about that on our website, ProvidenceFinancialInc.com. Uh, visit our Facebook page. As a matter of fact, if you haven't liked us on Facebook, uh, I would highly encourage you to do that because this is how we're going to notify you of upcoming changes. Again, we've got our YouTube channel there. We've got Twitter. We've got LinkedIn. Feel free to connect with us in those 
uh, in those uh, social media avenues, or you can simply call me here as well too. So um, if you're not a client of mine, feel free to call me. I'd be more than happy to schedule a quick 15 minute call with you and answer any questions that you have. So thank you for watching. Hope it's helped and uh, God bless.